that's a powerful, powerful prophetic declaration we made this morning. And you stand by what you said to the Lord. I believe. Someone say, I believe. One more time. I believe. And take your seats. A good morning to you. I just went out and I've seen the parking lot. It's, it's a, the parking lot is full with cars. What we want to do is, I'm afraid someone will come to church and turn around and leave, thinking there's no parking. We've rented out the parking opposite the church. So directly opposite us is Khalifa Hall. There's an additional 200 cars that can be parked in a locked off, sealed environment, one gate in. You drive your car in, you park wherever you want to park. The area is tarred, the security available on the top. And then you come down a staircase facing our front church entrance. And the people said. So those of you that are coming next week, you can drive straight into uh, Skidifa and park your vehicle there. It is safe. And we have people watching over your car. Those of you inviting people to join us at the services going forward, please inform them that when they drive into the road and they see the place full, there's additional parking opposite. Amen. So please, who, how many of you are inviting people to church? I don't invite people going to another church. Invite someone that's staying at home. Now, how many of you know a whole lot of Christians are at home, not attending church? People that have taken the vaccine, I've noticed that people that have taken the vaccine don't go to church anymore. Are you here? A whole lot of people that I know that have taken the vaccine have stopped attending church. I don't know whether the vaccine prevents you from coming to church. I'm not sure. No research done in that area yet. But if you know someone that's at home that's not attending church, please invite them to our local church. And then when they do arrive here, make sure you tell them there's additional parking opposite so that they don't drive away thinking that our parking lot is all full up. And the church said, would you give the Lord a good God bless you. We have some uh, books on sale there this morning, and if you think you're blessing someone, you're going to find a gift pack. It has four books in it for 200 grand, all wrapped and good to go. So if you're looking at giving someone a Christmas gift, this is a good gift filled with spiritual nourishment. Leg of lamb, turkey, biryani, nice spiritual food. And the church said, Amen. Now let's get with this morning's message. We're going to be speaking about temporary faith. Would you say that with me? Temporary faith. Temporary. One more time. I didn't hear you. Temporary. temporary. What in the world is temporary faith? Well, Jesus gave us the answer. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus describes this kind of faith in Mark 4.16. And these, the Lord speaking here, he says, And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground who when they have heard the word <coughs> pardon me can you see that when they have heard the word immediately they receive it with gladness and these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground who when they have heard the word, immediately receive the word with gladness. <clears throat> Jesus calls these people, people with temporary faith. They hear the word of the Lord ministered. They're sitting in the service. They're glad. They're excited. They moved in their spirit with the word of the Lord when they hear it. And they are extremely excited about what they hear. Then Jesus said, these people have no root and they have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the world's sake, immediately they are offended. The King James says they become displeased Ignorant, ignorant and resentful and they stumble and fall away. Now, many of us find ourselves in this situation. We hear the word of the Lord. 
in a service setting, in a church setting, and when we hear it, we believe it. We receive the word in our hearts, and we are glad about what we're hearing. However, someone say however, the word we're listening to in that service does not take root in our heart. It just serves us for that service time. It moves us emotionally just for that time. As long as everything in my life is fine, as long as everything in my workplace is fine and my children are fine, then I receive the word with gladness. But when I am tested, when life throws any kind of challenge at me, then we discover that the person who's hearing the word, that word has not settled in their heart and taken root. The word is just lying on the surface. And when a trial comes, when a test comes, and when life throws a challenge at you, then that person stumbles and the <coughs> scripture says they stumble and fall away. Now all of us are hearing the word of the Lord this morning, are we not? All of us are being exposed to the word. And at Cornerstone you have material, resource material where you have a book. You can go back and go through this message again. You can search the scriptures out for yourself. You can memorize the word. Now when you do those things, the word takes root in your heart. But when you listen to the word for the, in the service and then you walk out, you find out by the time you get home, you are busy, occupied with life. By the time Monday morning comes, you are full with all kinds of weekly responsibilities, earthly cares, and the cares and toils of life grabs a hold of you. The word that you heard on Sunday now becomes faint in your spirit. It becomes almost lost. You can't even remember what, many times what you heard. Because that word is not allowed to take root. Someone say take root. It's like a seed that is sown in the ground. When a seed is sown, and this is what Mark, the fourth chapter is actually talking about. It's talking about a farmer sowing seed. And some seed fell on stony ground. Temporary faith is stony ground where the seed lands on the ground and the ground is not conducive for growth so that seed does not have an opportunity to send its roots into the soil and anchor itself during a windy season and like in august and so on july and august and september you get winds in case of them when i was growing up they called it the kite season are you here? Kite season, the windy season. Nowadays, no one even knows what a, what a kite is. How many of you remember kites? Well, during that August month, when the winds will come, children will start making kites. And the wind will take the kites up into the air. Remember that? Now children don't even leave their house. They're looking at the television at home. Anyway, when this windy season comes, you'll see the wind blow. As long as the tree or the plant has roots in the soil, no matter how hard the wind blows, the tree stands firm. And the tree has the ability to sway in the wind because it is firmly rooted in the soil. And the people said, Likewise, here the Lord is describing someone who receives God's word, and God's word here is described as a seed. Someone say a seed. That seed is now planted in your heart. And your heart is not your pump. Your heart here is the spirit. And your spirit is described like a soil. Some of our spirits are contaminated. Polluted with the care of the world. So when the seed lands in your spirit, it does not have the opportunity to take root in your spirit. So when life throws you a challenge, when the medical doctor calls you and says, we found a lump, your child failed this grade. You are fired from this job. Do things like this happen? 
You are, you are cut down short time. Your business is bankrupt. Those are real life challenges that come to us. And many times they come to us unexpectedly. We don't plan for them. We're living our life. We're doing our best. We, we're trusting the Lord. But if that life throws a challenge at you and the challenge hits you, and the word of the Lord hasn't taken root in your life, then whatever challenge comes will utterly destroy you. Yeah. I mean, if you will, whatever the challenge is, it could be a challenge inside of your family. It could be your marriage, your children, your, your daughter-in-law, your son-in-law, whatever the challenge is, your neighbor that's giving you a problem. Something's happening at your work, whatever life throws at you. If the word of the Lord hasn't taken root, if that word is not anchored in your spirit, when life throws the challenge, then you are simply going to stumble and fall. And many of us end up stumbling and end up falling. And they have no root, Mark says here. And they have no root in themselves. But go on for a time. When trouble comes, or pain, someone say pain. When trouble comes, or pain, because of their word, they quickly become full of dust. And today there are people who profess faith in Christ, they are attending a church, but they do not truly believe the words of Jesus Christ. They truly do not have that spirit of faith inside their, heart, their hearts. And they have no, no root inside of them. So when temptation or trials come, they fall away because the word hasn't taken firm root inside of their hearts. Now in the book of Hebrews, Paul is talking again. This is Jesus now in all these scriptures in Mark. Then we go to the book of Hebrews and we see Paul talking to the Jewish Christians. That means there are Jews who became Christians in the New Testament. And when they became Christians, they were being persecuted by the synagogue, by the Jewish high priest that began to condemn them and say, how is it that you've left our Jewish faith and you are now following Jesus? And the Jewish Christians suddenly were found in a situation where they were being persecuted and even killed by their fellow Jews just because they were following Jesus Christ. And then in Hebrews 10, 36, let me take you there. The scripture here, Hebrews 10, 36 says, For you have, I don't know if you can see this, for you have need of, you have need of, endurance so that when you have done the will of God you may receive what was promised you have need of you have need of you have need of you have need of endurance endurance means that in spite of the pain you keep walking by faith in spite of the report you get, you keep walking by faith. In spite of what you're facing in your Monday morning, when you get up early Monday morning and you get up and go to work, and before you the devil is real. Before you there are challenges. You get up Monday morning, the car tire is flat. You get up Monday morning, the transport that's supposed to take you to work does not come on time. You get up Monday morning, someone that's supposed to take your children to school, they say, what do you do? How, how do you respond? Do you respond the same you do here at church? Thank you, Jesus. I know that you'll make a way in spite of what's happening. Or are you screaming at everyone? Screaming at your husband? The husband screaming at the wife? You're cursed the cat so many times? Kick the dog? Throw the coffee on the floor? What do you do when, you, when things don't work out like you want it to work out? You say to yourself, I came to church on Sunday morning, I praised the Lord, I gave my offering, I put my tithe in, and why is my car not here on time? Why is the tire flat? 
Do these things happen? Yes, you're driving on the road, minding your own business, and while you're peacefully driving, singing hallelujah, someone bangs you from the back. Now you didn't ask them to come bang you. You abiding by all the regulations on the road, but does life challenge you? Does life unfairly pop up on you and smack you on the face? All the time. If you're living on the earth all the time, bad things happen to good people all the time. Sometimes we can't even explain what's going on in our life. The more you seem to be doing the things correctly, the more you seem to be walking straight, holy and righteous, the more things seem to be going off all around. And the people said, <clears throat> well, what do you need? The scripture says you need endurance. Someone say endurance. One more time, endurance. One more time. Luke 8, 13. Could you take me to slide number 8 there, please? The Gospel of Luke, the 8th chapter, the 13th verses, and those upon the rock are the people <clears throat> who, when they hear the word, receive it and welcome it with joy, but they have no, someone say no root. Someone say no root. But let me tell you what you have to do in your life. You need to grow some roots. You need to develop some roots. Some roots where in God's precious word. That when the storm comes, when the trial comes, when the challenge comes, you will not be blown away in the wind. No! You will be rooted firm in the word. Rooted firm in the promise. No matter how hard the wind blows. In fact, the stronger the wind blows, the firmer you stand. You look like some little duck in the wind. You know they say of some people, every way the wind blows, they blow. The wind blows the sand, they'll blow and blow. The wind blows this way, they'll blow this way. No, 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 no. We are not tumbleweed. We are not dandelions. Some say dandelions. You see a dandelion? When the wind blows, the whole dandelion breaks up. No, I'm not a dandelion. I'm a strong child of Almighty God. I am firmly rooted and grounded in His Word. No matter what life throws at me, I stand firm. Having done all to stand, I stand. They believe for a while, the scripture says. These people that have no root, they believe for a while, and in the time of trial and temptation, they fall away. So will trials come? Yes. Will temptations come? Will, Jesus said, the storm will come. But he who builds his house upon the a firm foundation. Having roots is having a firm foundation. Having roots is being able to stand and hold on to the promise because the purpose of the root is to hold on to the soil while the circumstances externally are battering the tree. You may lose a few leaves in the process. You may break a few branches in the process. But are you standing firm? Yes. Are you standing firm? Yes. yes! When the wind blows, some leaves will come off you. When the wind blows, you may break a branch or two. There will be external damages. Yes, I carry on my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Didn't Paul say that? Yes. I got whipped marks on me. Marks where they've beaten me. Marks where they've... They persecuted me, hit me with the rod, 39 stripes so many times on my back. Did I suffer? Yes! But am I standing? Yes. Absolutely. And the people said, Amen. Now there was a person I want to introduce you to, a young man that was called, that goes by the name of Derek Redmond. A young man by the name of Derek. Redmond, say to me, Derek Redmond. Derek Redmond is an example of a man who was rooted and grounded. 
in his faith rooted and grounded in his faith and in 1992 he entered the Barcelona World Olympics to take part in the 400 meter Olympic race let's go and see this and then I'll make a few comments while we're doing it please 1992 is the year Barcelona City is where this is taking place. Can I have some volume there on that video, please? Derek Redmond is the man. He's the favorite 400 meter athlete that's going to run. He's trained, he's tall, and he's prepared physically for the 400 meter race. The gun goes off, the athletes take to the race, and Derek, like a bullet, flies onto the track. He's what these people call the favorite 400 meter athlete. Everyone knows he's going to win. 250 meters before the finish line, something tragic happens to Derek. He's an athlete that's prepared, physically ready, physically trained. But 200 meters before the finish line, his hamstring cuts and he collapses to the ground pain all through his entire body. The hamstring is something that connects your two legs, the upper and bottom leg, and that tears right in the middle of the race. Every other athlete passes him as he crashes to the ground, pain shooting right through his entire body. Medics rush immediately right to him, and a stretcher is brought on the scene to carry him off the track. Because there's no way he's going to be able to run. Derek does something amazing. He pushes away the medics, stands up to his feet. The medical officer rushes to him to tell him, hey, you can't run the race. There's no way you're going to do it. But he pushes the guy aside and begins to hobble. In the meantime, every other athlete has passed him and the race is now ending. Derek Redman is hopping on the track by himself with every other athlete completing the race ahead of him. He's dead last. Rushing through that crowd was another man and later on to find out it, it is his own dad that comes to his side and says, Derek, there's no need for you to run the race. Stop. You're going to physically damage your leg even further. Hold on. Don't go ahead. And his son turns around and says, Dad, I have to finish this race. I have to do it. So his father said to him, listen, if you're going to complete the race, then we'll do the race and complete it together. I'm not going to leave you alone. Together, father and son hobble to the track while Derek's dad holds him, wraps his arm around him and holds him as he hobbles through. The pain again shooting through his body, tears streaming down his face. He comes through to the finish line, and a few minutes before the finish line, his father lets him go and allows his son to cross the finish line by himself. Again, I must remind you, this pain rushing right through this young man's entire body. As the crowd watches what's happening, every single person 65,000 spectators rise to their feet and applaud Derek as he crosses the finish line. Derek Redmond did not come out first. Derek Redmond came out last. But he finished his race. He completed the race and he did it in spite of the pain. He did it in spite of the tears. He did it in spite of how he felt. He completed it, and his father was right there beside him. Now, look, news for you. If you are willing to run, if you are willing to endure, if you are willing to face the challenge in front of you, God, your heavenly Father. I said, God, your heavenly Father. I said, God, your heavenly Father will not leave you alone. He's always standing beside you. He will ensure that you complete the race. But the secret to life, ladies and gentlemen, is the willingness to endure whatever life throws at you. 
No matter how unexpected the challenge is, Derek was an athlete that was prepared. He trained, he prepared, he went on his diet. He was slim, trim, and ready to win. There was no way Mr. Redmond was not going to win the 400 meter race. He was going to win it. He knew he was going to win. The spectators knew he was going to win. His fellow athletes on the track knew he was going to win. But life threw a challenge, an unexpected challenge. No one could have predicted that his hamstring will cut. But there's something about this young man. He refused to run half the distance. In spite of every other athlete passing him, in spite of other people passing him in the race, that did not allow him to sit back, fall down, and when life throws you a challenge, sit on the side of the road and weep like a little baby. No, he got up. Someone say he got up. Against the advice of the medical personnel on the field that told him, don't do it. There's no need for you to run. He continued running, hoping in spite of the pain. And if you, ladies and gentlemen, if you in your life situation are willing to go on in spite of the pain, press on in spite of how you feel, if you are willing to do that in this life, God will come right by your side. And He will give you the necessary strength because God's word said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. He will come with you and He will ensure you finish the race. You don't have to finish first. No one's asking you to come out first. But we are asking you to complete the race. Let's stand to our feet. You must be able to say, I have run the race. Like the Apostle Paul said, I have run the race. I have cut the course. No matter what life throws at me, no matter what obstacles have come in front of me, no matter what has come to disturb me and distract me, I will do what God asked me to do. I will finish my course. And the people said, and I think Christians need to rise up with that kind of faith on the inside of them. When pain hits you, do you collapse? Do you stumble and stay there? Or do you bite your teeth and say, I'm not allowing this to stop me. I'm not going to allow the setback to stop me. I'm not going to allow the delay to deny me my opportunity to finish. If I'm delayed, if I'm denied, if I'm withheld, my brother, if the medical officer tries to grab me, get out of my way, sir. This is my race. Are you with me? This is my life. This is my home. This is my marriage. These are my children. That's the faith. No, don't be a weakling. Don't be a crybaby. If you're going to cry, Are you here? If you're going to cry, cry. But why are you crying, cry? Don't sit down and cry by the way. No, no, no. Get up. Cry. Yes, pain is going to fill your body. Yes. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, it's miserable. But I'm going to finish the race. And if that's the attitude you have, no devil, no demon, no human being, no setback will ever, ever be able to keep you down. And the people say, give them all the big goodness. If that's the attitude, if that's the passion burning inside of you, then the world has taken root. Then the world is full. And you go on. Ladies and gentlemen, the man that won that race. Are you here? Do this very quickly. Remembers who won the 1992 Barcelona Olympic 400 meter race. No one knows his name. Everyone knows the name Derek Redmond. Not because he came out first, but because he completed the race 
in the midst of his challenge. Hallelujah. No one remembers who came out first. No one remembers the man who received the gold medal. Everyone remembers the crowd did not applaud the winner of the race. The crowd applauded the person that came out last. Not because they came out last, because unlike every other athlete, this athlete completed the race in spite of his injury. Are you with me? So true in life. No one's interested in who wins. No one's interested in who's got the gold medal. But how did you get it? How did you get it? No one's interested about how much money. How? How did you get it? Oh, I got a story to tell. I got a testimony, my brother. I can tell you how I won. I can tell you how I finished. I can tell you about my life. This is what Jesus has done for me. This is what believing in the word has done for me. And people respect that. 65,000 people applauded for the man who came out last. That doesn't happen. I said that doesn't happen. And people will respect you. People will applaud you because you have successfully achieved whatever it is in spite of the challenges you face. And are there challenges in life? People respect them. And the congregation said, and the congregation said, temporary faith is only there when everything is fine. The moment a challenge comes, your faith is gone. Oh, I'm going back to Hinduism. Oh, I'm going back to Shemba. Oh, I'm going back to the world. Oh, this Christianity doesn't work. That's temporary. No, my brother, in, this, in spite of the toughest times, if you stand strong, God will leave His glory, wrap His arm around you, and make sure you finish. And the people said, you got your seed in your hand, grab a hold of your seed, your offering, your tithe, whatever it is, grab it, grab it in your hand this morning. Lord, we give you thanks for your word, your precious word, your holy word. Lord, whoever walked into this building, whatever it is they're facing this morning, whatever the challenge is, whatever the challenge is, let's sing that. Can we sing that again? What we sang? What Gloria just sang now? Let's play it there. Let me just pray. Lord, I pray for every single one. Whatever it is they're facing, whatever the challenge, whatever the challenge, whether it's in their marriage, whether in their workplace, whether it's in their business and employment, I pray, Lord, that the word of faith that they're hearing this morning will take root in their hearts. That when the wind blows, when the storm comes, when the enemy attacks, they will be able to stand firmly rooted in the promise of your precious word. Whether it's the medical report, whether it's a doctor's report, we choose to believe your word. We choose to walk in the promise in Jesus' name. All things are possible to him who believes. All things, all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the seed, Lord, that we sow, we don't give selfishly, we give cheerfully. We don't give grudgingly, we give with hearts filled with thanksgiving for your goodness and your mercy. And as we sow our seed, Lord, we thank you for the harvest you're going to bring in Jesus' name.